um, we've had a lot of is about avascular necrosis. Sure, yes. So basically, what the first person wants to know is what is avascular necrosis mm -hmm. and how is it related to lupus? In uh, pathology, uh, all these terminologies really are descriptive in their very nature. So A, vascular necrosis, A means absent, vascular means blood supply, and necrosis means bone death, essentially, or death of whatever it might be. In this case, it relates to bone. So A, vascular necrosis is a situation wherein a certain, as it is in the context of this question, um, place of bone is not getting adequate blood supply and hence dying off. So that's what it is, fundamentally, and there are certain parts of the skeletal system which are more uh, uh, vulnerable to this, and the reason this is something which you see in lupus patients or people who suffer from it in different uh, stages of severity are the fact that when people require steroid treatment, and I know that's going to be a question for later on down, I feel it's something we can tie back in all into one, uh, these areas which are more vulnerable uh, tend to lose this adequate degree of blood supply and hence that portion of the bone will will necrose or in other words die off. That's what AVM fundamentally is. There's certain places that tends to be more of a problem for lupus patients such as the um, head of the femur uh, in the hip. Um, there's also a, a bone in the wrist and a bone in the foot which are known to be more inclined for this to be the case or other places as well but uh, this is more often uh, where we see this. What can you do if it's in the arm or, the, or in the hand mm -hmm. or the foot? Like well, I, I don't think there's pointedly a specific safeguard for one area of the anatomy versus another. I, I don't think that there is uh, something you can do which is pointedly more useful, if you will, to the wrist or hand, I should say, um, the, the wrist explicitly. There's one bone called the scaphoid bone where there is a, uh, a, a, just the anatomy of the bone and the way the blood supply is to it protends itself to avascular necrosis in context of a fracture more so and the head of the talus to be very specific which is in the foot and of course the head of the femur. I don't think there's a good answer to that question which is to say that I don't think you can explicitly protect one or the other so well. Um, I, I would just make the point that if one has uh, incurred a fracture let's say of the scaphoid, the bone of the wrist, uh, that requires remarkably high level of due diligence, which is to say monitoring and clinical evaluation. In fact, I just took care of a patient with a scaphoid fracture recently, and it's a tenuous thing because you don't want that, again, piece of bone to die off. Yeah, perfect. Um, so what can you do to protect yourself against AVN? So I think that's one. I'd say to the extent one can avoid a fracture um, because it doesn't mean that, it, this is one of, the way I would phrase it is this, not everyone who's on steroids is going to get AVN, but it is undoubtedly a risk factor for that in the context of lupus and that landscape. Um, to the extent one can help uh, mitigate that, I think is what you're asking, uh, I'd like to avoid a fracture first outright of any one of these places. Now, one isn't likely to get a fracture in their hip so easily, mm -hmm. um, but to make a correlate, uh, a fracture of the wrist, and this is why, I, and it's not the first time I've seen it in my career, as I, I'm also, and I forgot to mention in the onset, as I, in, in the context of sports medicine, I mean, a lot of this is non-operative musculoskeletal stuff. That's why you see a lot of overlap with, and one of your questions is about rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis and basically primary bone health as it relates to sports, uh, athletically inclined populations, whether or not they actually are playing sports. The point here being that um, to the extent a fracture can be prevented, that should happen. I don't believe there's good safeguards as such uh, other than perhaps monitoring, and it's another question in there as it relates to osteoporosis. Um, all you can do is be vigilant, and I think that if one has fractured their scap scaphoid bone, for example, um, then they need to have regular imaging of it to ensure that it's not going to necrose. And th that's the case whether one has lupus or not, by the way, just to make a point. One maybe have a higher predilection, perhaps, if they are a lupus patient, but it doesn't mean that uh, and we're off the hook those who don't have lupus. Yeah. Just know that. And it is uh, the shaky, actually, probably what depends what would be more relevant or just as relevant is where precisely the fracture is of that bone. And that's a different discussion. But Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have 